so let's start uh, today's uh, lecture. Oh, okay. So the the we are stay is, uh, we'll be staying on the same line, namely our topic is communication. Last week. We have two parties, Alice and Bob. And uh, we have a protocol. We have a protocol. Just, uh, you know, the three-round protocol. Very simple three-round protocol. Sending an uh, integer from Alice to Bob and one bit from Bob to Alice and the integer from Alice to Bob. And small computation in the Bob side. This is, a, just, this is a, a protocol. Then, following this protocol, Alice can, can prove something, actually, x. Alice can prove that integer x is a quadratic residue uh, to Bob. Alice can prove that this x is a quadratic residue against Bob, but Alice does not send any information, does not reveal any information about the answer, about the answer. X is y square mod m. So Alice does not reveal any information about this answer y to Bob. But still, Alice can convince Bob that this x is a quadratic residue. So really, really amazing. So the, the what we call zero knowledge proofs. OK. So if the answer is yes, Alice can convince Bob without revealing any answer. And if the answer is no, so x is not a quadri quadratic residue, then if they follow this uh, communication protocol, then Alice cannot uh, convince Bob. In other words, Bob does not accept the input with probability one half. So just we can re repeat this process, then that probability can be can be uh, bigger and bigger. Okay. So this is uh, what we did last week, and today um, the idea, uh, the topic is the same, but. Okay, so the, the topic is still communication, but uh, uh, today's problem is more directly related to communication. So our chapter five is communication complexity. Okay, our model is the same. We have two parties, Alice and Bob, and uh, some communication protocol. But the difference is Alice has her own input x, and Bob has his own input y. Okay. Now, Alice has its own input, and Bob has his own input also. And the task is compute. They need to compute they need to compute f of x and y for some specific some specific function f. Okay? So this is this is the, the job. This is the task. And the goal is to minimize. The number of bits. for communication.
So this is our today's problem. Okay? Once again, we have two parties, Alice and Bob. Alice has its own input x, Bob has its own, own input y, and the task is to compute some specific function value, f of x and y. Okay? With a minimum number of bits for communication. Of course, Alice does not know input y. Bob does not know input x. So they need some kind of, you know, some kind of communication to compute this, this value. So we, we have to minimize the number of bits to exchange between Bob and Alice. OK. Um, oh, let's quickly go to an example, because it, it's easy, easy to understand the problem. So example. One, um, x and y are subsets of one through n, and f of x y OK? So, Alice, Bob, Alice has an uh, input x is equal to something like uh, 1, 2, uh, 8, 9. And the Bob has input y, uh, 3, 6, 7. Okay, so this is a situation. An important ass assumption is that uh, Alice and Bob. No, this ground set. So Alice and Bob does know, do know, this ground set 1 through n. But they don't know, Alice does not know Bob's y, and Bob does not know Alice's x. So they need to compute this function. What is this, this function? This is uh, quite easy, simple. Maximum value, maximum va value of x union y. So in this case, what is the answer? The answer is 9, of course. Right? OK. So what is, what is the protocol? What is the protocol? OK. I'll tell you the important fact about this problem. There is always trivial algorithm. Okay. Always exists a trivial protocol. Meaning, Alice sends x. OK. This is trivial. Always trivial algorithm protocol. Alice sends her input x to Bob. To Bob. OK, then of course, Bob can compute function value x, f of x, and y, right? It's of course possible. Of course possible. So in this case, what is the communication complexity? What is the communication complexity? Communication complexity uh, Let's use just cc. Communication complexity is, you know, the the we have uh, we have at most n numbers in X, at most n numbers in X, and remember that we are counting the number of bits, number of bits. So each 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 number uh, may have uh, log n bits. So that means communication complexity is something like n log n, right? 
because at most n numbers, and each number mm, has something like a log n bits. But uh, it turns out uh, this is too much. It's too much. Uh, actually, actually, this is uh, not n log n, but uh, n. Why? Because just remember our assumption. Alice and Bob do know this uh, ground set, this ground set uh, 1 through n. That means, uh, you know, just Alice sends Bob. Not, th not, not these numbers directly, but uh, uh, in this case, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, I don't know which. Yeah. This bit sequence. This bit sequence. I just send Bob this bit sequence, then Bob, Bob can know that Alice has 1, 2, 8, and 9. Because, of course, oh, I'm sorry. I made a mistake. Okay. So this first bit is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. OK? So what Arish has to send is not, uh, not the direct numbers, but this bit sequence. This bit se sequence is enough. That means uh, the communication complexity of this, this trivial protocol is, yeah, this one, linear. OK. Um, of course. Beta Rosen? Of course, we have a beta algorithm. But that, that is uh, you know, just sending I just sends her biggest number. Okay? In that case, I sends her biggest number nine, then Bob can see, Bob, Bob can figure out that uh, that's the biggest number in the, uh, in the set x in y is 9, because Bob does not have a bigger number than 9. OK? So in, th in this case, communication complexity is log n, because I just send the biggest number, the we need log n bits for one number. OK. So far, so good. So everything's clear? OK? Good. Now, second example. Um, the same. Same x and y, so they are both a subset uh, of uh, 1 through n. And a function x is uh, OK. Uh, function x is the average value of x union y. Okay? So, uh, I don't know. What is the average value? 
So in this case, average value of 1, 2, 8, 9, 3, 6, 7, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, anyway, that is a function f. OK, do you understand the problem? Good. Now, what is your, your protocol? What is the protocol? What is the algorithm? Oh. So what about this? R just sends the average of her x. Is this OK? Is this enough? No, yeah, no. That's correct. This is no. Because in this case, the average is, I don't know, 1 to, one to 8 to 9. Mm -hmm. Average is 5, I guess. Yeah. But uh, if C are sent just 5, then Bob doesn't know, you know, how many numbers does she have. Yeah, it's completely different. It's completely different. Aris may have only one five, or Aris may have a one and nine, and Aris may have uh, these, uh, these four numbers. There are many, many different cases. And uh, Bob does need to know the number of uh, numbers. Okay. I'm sorry, <laughs> I have a cold. So, I send both the average of her x, no, and her, the number of her number. So, the Chris algorithm sends the number. size, number. Ah, the number of the number. <laughs> size. X and the average of X or the sum. X. So this is it. What it means communication complexity is equal to uh, log n. Log n, right? Because the artists need to send need to send two numbers, but both need log n bits, so it's not a big problem. Just a big goal of log n bit. Okay, well, it's easy. <laughs> it's easy. Now we are getting to the uh, bit harder problem. Bit harder problem. Okay, now example three. Uh, X and Y are the same as before. And now, function f of xy is not average, but the uh, median, median of the of the union of x and y. What is the median? Median is uh, just the uh, middle, the middle number. OK? So in this case, in this case, 1, 2, 3, 6, 7, 
Okay, in this case, uh, so union of x and y is 1, 3, 1, 2, 3, 6, 7, 8, 9. And the median is exactly the middle, middle number. In this case, that is 6. Okay? Uh, formally speaking, uh, two x as the size of x plus y divided by two largest. So this is our this is our uh, definition of the media in this in this lecture. Okay, so we have a uh, seven. We have a seven, and divided by two is three point five. Is a Gaussian, uh, you know, it's a kind of round up, round up. Then the fourth largest one, two, three, four. Fourth largest is our definition of the medium. Ah, this is not 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 that easy. Not that easy. Can you come up with some, some uh, protocol other than trivial one? Or the we have always trivial ones, meaning just sending everything. That is, of course, possible, but we can do better. We can do better. OK, I'll show you an Our protocol. This is our algorithm. Actually, this is not a very good algorithm. This is not a very good algorithm. I'll show you, the I'll show you another uh, uh, algorithm that is much, much better than this. But anyway, this is still non-trivial. This is still non uh, already. This is already non-trivial. Step zero. Uh, step zero is a, is a kind of a preparation. Kind of preparation. Alice and Bob send the size of uh, the input, the size of the input to each other. So in that case, Alice sends four to Bob, and Bob sends three to Alice. Just the size of her imp uh, the input. Okay, it's a preparation. Now the main part of the algorithm, number one, step one. Okay. Now, uh, in that example, uh, n is 10. n is 10. And Alice sends the number of items which are at least n over 2. So at least 5. At least 5. In that case, that is 2. Okay? So Alice sends the Bob. Then
Okay. Now, Bob can feel it. Bob can tell whether the median is at least one half or less, at least n over two or less. Why? For example, Alice has a Bob has y, and okay. So suppose you just think of this situation. Just uh, think of an uh, uh, easy uh, example. Alice has eight numbers. Alice has eight numbers, and Bob has 12 numbers. And Alice's number, in Alice's case, side, uh, so uh, she has three numbers, less than, uh, less than n over 2, this side. First side, and eight numbers in the second side. Okay. Bob has 10 numbers in this side and only two numbers that side. And in this case, Bob sends what? Bob sends three. Uh, no, I sends, uh, who's the yes, I'm sorry, five. I sends five to Bob. Okay, but uh, remember that uh, Bob does know that I has eight numbers. That means, Alice had uh, three numbers in this side, and Bob has ten numbers on this side. The total number in the first side is 13. Okay. That means, you know, Bob can tell, Bob can figure out that the medium is this side, first side, right? Because you know, we have, a, we have, a, we have a t a 20 numbers in total, and the first side has 13 numbers. So obviously, uh, the medium should be there. Should be there. That means what we can figure out uh, our medium should be in this side, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh Okay. Now we know both of them, both Alice and Bob know that uh, uh the the medium should be in the first half, in the first half of the, of the numbers. Then we just repeat this, okay? Then the, they said the number, the, the border is uh, here. Border is uh, n over four, n over four, and exactly does the same thing, okay? Then th this is exactly a binary search, you know? The median should be this side, then the, the median should be this side or that side, and do the same thing. Just repeatedly. It's doing the binary search. Then, after log n rounds, after log n rounds of this step, of this uh, repetition, then the, the area of, uh, the, area of the uh, candidate, area of the uh, medium, should be ve very small, just, you know, just one number, just a constant numbers. Okay. So we are done. We are done. So what is the communication complexity? What is the communication complexity? Uh, 
Hur låg en bit? Fast är låg en bit. And this is also log n bit. Log n bit. Oh, this is just single bit. Notified to, to Alice, it's just a single bit. So just one, just one bit. And uh, how many, how many rounds do you need to repeat? Of course, log n rounds. Because this is a binary search. Right? That means. Yeah, communication complexity is log n squared. Because in each single round, we need log n bits for communication, and we need log n rounds. That means log n times log n is log n squared. Good, good. But I, as I said, we do have better hardware. We can remove this too. Okay, I'll show you. Or maybe, maybe uh, you can come up with this algorithm. This algorithm is clever, but uh, maybe not, not crazily clever. Yeah, probably you can come up with the idea. But the next one, well, this is really, really clever. I think I hope you can you can feel that the next one is really nice. We have a much better algorithm. Step zero. Again, this is a preparation. Okay. <laughs> the first step, step zero, is uh, just for preparation. They do exactly the same thing as before, just sending the size of their input to each other. Here, you know, we, we make an important assumption that the size of x and y are the same. Okay. Without loss of generality, without loss of generality, we can assume that uh, the size of the x is the same as the size of y. Otherwise, if the size is different, then we can add the same number of 0 and n, on n plus 1 to the smaller set. Okay. For example, Suppose that the so size of x is uh, 8, size of y is equal to 12. Then we add, you know, x is equal to something like this. Then we add two zeros and 2 n plus 1, 11. Okay? We add 
two zeros and two elevens. Where n is 10? Where n is 10? Maybe 10 is a little bit too small. Maybe a So we had two zeros and two n plus ones. Then the size of the x becomes 12. It's the same as the size of y. And of course, the median does not change. Right? OK. Well, <laughs> there are a couple of details, small details. For example, if, uh, uh, what about if the size of the x is an uh, odd number? Ah, you know that, that, that's a small thing. So just you know, you, you, you can you can you can you can consider uh, what should be done by yourself. Okay, so it's a, it's a not big uh, big problem. So uh, now we can assume that the size of the x is equal to the size of y. Now we are going to the main step. So now Alice checks, which is the case? We have two cases, case one and case two. Alice looks at, looks at her numbers and check which is the case about her numbers. Case one, more items are at least one half. Number two, case two, more items are, oops, yeah. Case one, more items are more than at least n over two. More items are less than n over two. Okay? So I check which is the case. And of course, send send it to Bob. Notify to Bob. Now, Bob does the same thing. Bob makes the same check about his numbers. OK. Now, now, we have a uh, nice. Nice. Now we can do a very important observation, important analysis. Okay. For example,
this is one possibility. Okay, this is one possibility. We have a middle, n over 2, here. And Alice has more number here, but Bob has more numbers here. This is kind of a cross. This is one possibility. What is the other possibility? Of course. Oh, of course, of course, it is we have a, we have a, you know, it is we have a, a kind of a, uh, a similar possibility, less more and more less, but that's the same thing, almost the same thing. So this is just cross, and this is a kind of parallel. So this is the second case. This is the second possibility. But Alice ha has more numbers here, and Bob has also more, num more numbers here. This is the same side. This is the same side, or parallel, not cross. OK. Now, here's the important, here's a very important observation. In this case, case A, In this case, oh. OK. Now is a very important ob observation. Alice. Alice can discard. Can discard the smallest m over two items. M is a number of x and number of y. Because they do not include the media. And Bob also can discard the uh, smaller. Uh, sorry. Sa similar for Bob. Uh, this is a not very similar. I should write it down. I'm sorry. So it's similar, but uh, not smallest, but n over two largest items. OK. Uh, let's see why this is OK. Suppose that this is the case. Suppose that this is the case. Okay? So Alice has uh, 12 numbers 
here and the phone numbers there. Bob has six and ten. Okay. Both has both have uh, sixteen numbers. Sixteen numbers. What is the median? Median is the sixteenth largest. Sixteenth largest, right? Because they have thirty-two numbers in total. So due to our definition, the median is the sixteenth largest. Okay. What I'm saying is Alice can discard eight numbers from here. Smallest eight numbers from here. Bob can discard smallest no no largest eight numbers from here. Why is this okay? We have 12 numbers and 8. We have 10 numbers, 8. Why there is no median in these 8 numbers? You know, this is an elementary school calculation. Suppose that we do have a median in these eight numbers, then what happens? The number of numbers, the number of items, which is at most medium, is eight plus six, 14. Contradiction. Right? Once again, suppose that there's a median in these eight numbers. Then the number, the number of items at most medium is at most, 8 plus 6 is 14. That is a contradiction. Because the median is 16th largest. So that's why that we can safely discard these eight numbers. And exactly the same reason, for the same reason, Bob can discard these eight numbers. Importantly, by discarding those eight numbers, in Alice's side and both sides, does not change the medium. Okay? Does not change the medium. That means, if this case happens, then Bob and Alice can decrease the number of items from 32 to 16. Very good progress. Very good progress. OK? Then what about this case? What about this case? This case is much, much easier because the medium should be here, right? That means in this case, the range, the range of the medium becomes the whole thing to one half. The same thing as before. If this case happens, the number of uh, candidates, the number of candidates becomes one half. If this case happens, the range, the range of the candidate becomes one half. Just repeat. Just repeat. So if, you, if this case happens, then you know we can exactly do the same thing. If this case happens, then the, the borderline becomes one n over force, n over four. That's a change. That's a change. But what we do is just the same as before. 
Okay? So just repeat. Just repeat one to two. And by doing one round, the size, this case, the size becomes one half, or the range. The range becomes one half. Okay? And we need just one bit. One bit or two bits, I don't know. Maybe two bits. Maybe two bits for one round. Oh, uh, number zero. Number zero is a preparation. So we, we do need a log n bit for, for, for the step zero, but that is only once. That is only once. So we don't have to care. We don't have to worry about that. Just only once. So repeating one to two log n times, then <laughs> the size or the range becomes constant. We are done. We are done. Okay? This is very clever. This is really, really clever. Yeah, I was surprised. And it's, uh, in, our, in our field, it's, uh, there, are, there are many, many, many clever algorithms. Clever algorithms. Yeah, I already showed you several nice algorithms. It's really, really amazing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Good. So, all the examples I showed you um, have uh, relatively, relatively small communication complexities, like log n, log n squared. Something called small complexity, communication complexity. But that is not always correct. That is not always true. For some problem, we need much more communications. So I'll show you such a difficult example next. So, example So this is our next example. Well, actually, it's, it's, uh, this is should, should, uh, should be example four, because it's, uh, uh, I skipped example four. But the example four is coming. Is coming in a moment. In a moment. OK? So this is uh, example five. x and y are the same as before. And the function is uh, has only two values, 0 and 1, if x and y does not have a common item, does not disjoint. X and y are disjoint, then, then, you know, then uh, the value is zero. If x and y have a common element, same element, then the function value is one. 
oh, this is just like uh, you know, you you are talking to you are talking to uh, your your girlfriend or boy boyfriend by phone, you know. No, you wanna go. You wanna go. You wanna go, you wanna, you wanna go to dinner, to some co some restaurant. No, uh, what you are thinking is something like you know, it's uh, several four or five restaurant. She also are thinking, you know, three four restaurant. You wanna find if there's the same restaurant, in your mind and in her mind. The question is. Is there a better, is there a better protocol? Is there a better protocol or a better algorithm rather than, you know, sending your candidate, sending all your candidate to her? Once again, you are thinking five different restaurants in your mind. She's also thinking something like a six uh, restaurants in her mind. The question is where is the same restaurant? In your mind and in her mind. Is there any better algorithm rather than, rather than sending all your restaurants to her? <coughs> the answer is no. The answer is no. There is no better way than sending everything. Yeah, I'll prove that, that, uh, that fact a bit later. But uh, for preparation, I'll show you. Easier problem. Example four. Sorry. Zero. So Bob and Alice and Bob have uh, n bit strings. N bit strings. For example, Alice has this three bit string, one zero one, and Bob has uh, this three bit string, zero zero one. The function f is just a uh, parity. Function f is just a parity of uh, of uh, both strings. <coughs> the function value is becomes zero if the total number of ones in x and y is even. The function value becomes 1 if the total number of 1s is odd. Or in that case, the number of 1s is 3. That is odd. OK? So it is, uh, the function value is 1. <laughs> of course, this is a very easy problem. A very easy problem. So just Alice sends Bob the number of 1s uh, in, her, in her string. OK? That's enough. That is what? That is log n. Communication complexity is log n. OK? But uh, this log n is uh, necessary. It, this log n is necessary. So I can prove that there is no better algorithm than log n.
This is a protocol. Alice sends her parity, 0 or 1, and Bob sends his parity, 0 or 1. Then both, both sides can tell the, can, can tell the function value. And we can look at this protocol as follows. Okay, <coughs> just look at this protocol as follows. Alice sends her parity 1 or 0 to Bob, and then Bob sends his parity 1 or 0 to Alice. Then looking at this tree, we have four different cases, right? Four different cases means this is uh, Alice odd and Bob odd. In total, it's even. Alice odd, Bob even, then odd. Alice even, Bob odd, is odd. So this is four different cases. OK. Now, it's very important to know that for this problem, you need to distinguish you need to distinguish these four cases, right? You need to distinguish these four cases. And, you know, in order to distinguish four different cases, you need two bits. You need two bits. Because this is a binary tree, and this is a four different cases then the depth of the binary tree is log 4, is 2. Okay. Once again, this is very important. Distinguishing four different cases. Then we need log 4 is equal to 2 depths. That is the number of uh, bits to communicate between Alice and Bob. This is a table describing the whole cases for Alice's input and Bob's input when n is equal to 3. So suppose that Alice and Bob have three bit string. Then this is all cases. 
Okay? Alice, Alice is input, maybe one of them, and Bob's input, maybe one of them. And in each entry, we can write the correct answer. The correct answer, zero, 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 zero. Okay, so this is a correct answer. For example, uh, Alice one 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 and Bob zero zero zero, then the the total parity is odd. Okay, and for example here, one zero one and zero zero one again odd. Zero zero one and zero zero one is even. Okay, so this is a correct answer. Now, Alice sends her parity in the first round. Alice sends her parity. That means Alice is telling Alice is telling Bob that her input her input is this side or that side. Right? Alice's input, you know, that's a Alice sends one. Odd means Alice's input is here, upper side. Alice sends zero, that means Alice is, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Alice sends one, that means Alice's input is the lower side. Alice sends zero, now it's input this upper side. Then Bob sends that is divided by this line. Okay? Bob sends one. His part is odd, that means Alice's input is this side. Zero, that side. Now by doing Two red lines by writing two red lines. Two red lines means two bits communication. Two bits communication. Then you can see each part has a single answer. Right? By separating two red lines, each area has a single answer. Namely, we are done. We are done. Okay. So let's do exactly the same thing for the example five. For example five. Now here, we do the same thing. For example five.
Suppose that now n is equal to 10. So Alice, Alice's input, Bob's input, like that. Alice, you know, has uh, one subset of 1 through n, 1 through 10, and Bob has al also one subset of 1 through n. OK? It's also the same thing as before. Now, once again, Alice sends one bit to Bob. Maybe Bob, maybe send one bit to Alice, and maybe this may be Alice again. Maybe Alice again, no problem. That is not so big a difference. Maybe Alice again. But uh, by doing this, we have, uh, we have different cases, as before, different cases. The question is how many? If we have m different cases to be distinguished, then we need log m bits. Log m bits for communication. That is exactly as before. By sending one bit, Alice sends one bit, then the you know the the this table will be divided into one two parts. Right? Exactly as before. Now then, Bob sends one bit. Then again, the whole table will be div divided into two parts. Then Alice sends, maybe here, and Bob sends, like this. Now we have how many? I don't know. It's, uh, it's uh, how we have. Uh, uh, Ah, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's a little bit complicated because, uh, you know, this is uh, the first, uh, first uh, divide, and then the second divide is, uh, uh, is here, but uh, yeah, here. So now we have uh, four, four different parts. Now, the third, it's here, but you know, th this is looks like uh, uh, divided in two, but only this area. But uh, uh, you know, just if you think a bit carefully, then the again, by one by sending one bit, we can divide the, the whole thing into two parts. That means we have uh, at the same time something like this, but uh, it's a little bit complicated. So anyway, anyway, by by sending bits. This table uh, will be divided into, you know, 2, 4, 8, 16, like this, like that. Okay? Now, now, this is a question. How many red lines, how many red lines do you need to record, to realize this? To realize this means each rectangle each small area has a single answer. Single answer. OK. So I'll show you this. I'll show you that. So this is a simple observation, simple observation. We just look at the cells. We have cells like this. This means, you know, it's a, um, uh, the, the, this cell, there's, a, there's one cell in each 
each column, each column and each row. And this cell means you no know, Bob Alice has everything and Bob has nothing. That means this cell is uh, this set and its complement. Its complement. This cell is uh, Alice set and its complement. And this is uh, Alice set is one two and its complement is three to ten. Okay. And this is uh, Alice is one and its complement. And Alice nothing its complement. So we have a two to the n, two to the n cells, two to the n cells. Okay, now. Okay, now suppose that we can divide the whole table into small, small rectangles by red lines, by red lines. Now you can see that no two cells, notice that some kind of cells can be in the same rectangle, in the same rectangle. No two cells. So for example, suppose that So suppose that these two cells are in the same rectangle. This cannot happen. This cannot happen. Why? Because the answer is what? Zero. The answer is zero. Because this is a reset and this is a complement. A reset complement. So the answer is zero. What is the answer here? Each one. This is one. Okay? If those two cells are in the same rectangle, then this cell must be in the same rectangle. And this cell must be the same rectangle. But the answer of this cell is one. Should be one. Okay? Is that okay? Because it's obvious. You know, this is a, this is a, RC is Alice is, uh, you know, Alice is a uh, set, and this is a complement. The same, the same, you know, the same uh, Alice is set, but it's more. Uh, it should be one. Okay? Uh, I'm sorry, this is not one. But this one should be one. Should be one. So, you know, this is uh, uh, against the definition of uh, rectangle. Same answer as rectangle. Okay, now, Okay. Now we are done. No two cells can be in the same rectangle of size two, two, two or more. 
That means each rectangle includes only one, only one this special cell. That means we need at least two to the n rectangles. And by the by this argument, by this argument, okay, we need we need uh, two to, uh, log two to the n is equal to n communication bits or depth n, depth n, depth n. So communication com complexity is n. That is exactly the same as the obvious algorithm. Just sending everything. Just sending everything. Good. So, you know, this is uh, example five. That problem is a hard problem. So there is no better algorithm than sending everything. Okay? Just uh, just uh, uh, obvious algorithm. Okay, so we are done today. So today, uh, I showed you the several examples which needs relatively small number of bits for communication, something like log n, log n square. But there is another type of uh, hard problem, meaning we need uh, n bits. N bits means you know, it's a, a no, better, no better algorithm than trivial one. So communication complexity is quite important. You know, you have a lots and lots of uh, uh, applications because just think of your, your pay for your cell phones. You know, it's a, you're paying your money for the number of communication bits. Exactly, right? So uh, this communication complexity is a very, very big issue, both in theory and practice. Great. So we are done today. Uh, the next week, I'm not very sure. What's the topic? I don't remember. But anyway, anyway, it is a. Uh, uh, I'm not. I'm not very sure what kind of uh, topics I. Uh, I'm talking about. But anyway, uh, see you next week. <laughs>